Assalamu alaikum everybody and a very warm welcome to episode 33 of the Arabic with Sam podcast. I pray that you guys are very, very well. I pray that you guys are having a blessed Ramadan. And even for those of you who are not fasting for whatever reasons, Muslim or not, um, how are you guys doing? Hope you guys are well. So, in this episode, as promised, we are going to be talking about the Kana family. The Kana family is one of my favourite families in the whole of the Arabic language, so uh, that's what we're going to be getting into. But just before we get into the details of the lesson, and uh, we start going through maybe 13 verbs, 10 of which you've maybe never heard of, I just want to remind you guys that you can register your interest um, for a very, very cool little service and product that I've created recently called My Arabic World. My Arabic World is a purpose-built immersion experience for Arabic language students, you know. I think we know that here in the West, our experience of learning Arabic is really amazing with a lot for a lot of things, right? Like, it's very easy for us to build our vocabulary. There are vocab lists galore and Instagram accounts that have word of the day and stuff like that, including mine. And um, there's loads of grammar courses and stuff like that, but something that we're really lacking is real immersion, in the Arabic language, and that's a problem that we solve at My Arabic World. So to find a little bit more about My Arabic World, you can just go to www.myarabicworld.com forward slash coming soon, and there's uh, loads of information about the website and uh, what it's going to be. And you can you can just register your interest, right? Like right at the bottom, there's a whole video on the on the page actually that will tell you all about it and what it is and how it works, but um and, and how you can get yourself involved in it. But underneath is just a little opportunity for you to just put your name. And uh, just let me know that you're interested in it and we'll keep you up to date on what myself and my team are doing behind the scenes to build this resource for the, you know, for the community of Arabic students. So that's something that I'd like you guys to do. www.myarabicworld.com forward slash coming soon. Um, cool. So let's get into it. So what what is the Kana family, right? Well, when I say the Kana family, that's not really what the grammarians call it. That's not what the grammar book call it, right? You know, what, what, what it's actually called is Kana wa akhawatuha. Kana wa akhawatuha. So Kana and her sisters is actually what it's called. So um, so firstly, um, what Kana is is a verb, right? What it means is Kana, which is a verb, and another verbs that another group of verbs that behave the same way as Kana, right? But they mean different things, right? So what do they do? What, what, what am I talking about when, when, when I'm saying that they behave in the same way? So the rule in Arabic is that they tonsib al-khabar. Okay, what on earth does that mean <laughs> to, to people who don't know what tonsib al-khabar is? is um, so Kana means to be something, okay? It means to be. Um, and it's usually means, it's, it's usually in the past tense, right? Usually saying something was, right? And Kana has an ism and a khabar. It has a thing that, it's a, it has a thing that's doing the being and the thing that, it is, right? So you have something like, so if you were to have something like, the man was rich, okay? The man is, the man is the ism, the man is the name, yeah, the thing that we're talking about. And the fact that he's rich is the, is the thing that we're learning about him, right? Which we call the khabar or the news, right? So we have like the name and the news. We have the man, the name of the thing we're talking about. Then we have the thing that we learn about the man, right? The fact that he's rich, right? So in Arabic, well, if we're just going to say the man is rich, right? We just say arrajulu ghaniyun, arrajulu ghaniyun. Yeah, ghani is the word to to be rich. Yeah, arrajulu ghaniyun. But if we're going to say the man was rich, okay, we say kan arrajulu. But you remember how I mentioned that tonsib al khabar, right? The khabar is the ghaniyun. So now it's going to be ghaniyan. Yeah, that's what it means to do nasab or to to make it have fathas on the end. Kan arrajulu ghaniyan. That the man was rich, kind of implying that he's not anymore, right? Kan arrajulu ghaniyan. And all of all of Kana's sisters behave like this. They all have this same kind of rule. They they, they all do that. So what are they? What are Kana's sisters? You know, the, the point of this lesson isn't necessarily to go over the rule of what Kana does, but just to introduce you to all of the sisters of Kana, because there are some that, um, there are some that, um, that are just, that are worth knowing. There's about five core ones that I think are really common. And then the other ones aren't really ones that you'll ever need to produce yourself, but it is worth knowing that they are sisters of Kana. So, so the first one, um, one of my favourite verbs actually, is the verb laysa. Um, one of the theories, when I used to teach children, um, one of the theories of why it's Kana and her sisters, like why are they sisters? So, I mean, why, why isn't it Kana and his brothers? But, but one of the theories of the students that I used to teach is that because they sound like girls' names, like Laysa sounds a bit like Lisa, and another one of the verbs is Sara, and, it sounds, and it's like Sarah, right? They sound like girls' names. I don't know how um, Sahih that is. But... Um, so laser, okay, laser is one of the verbs that does this. So if we're going to say the man is not rich, we'd say laser rajalu ghaniyan. 
Yeah, it behaves the, behaves the same way. The man is not rich. But notice there how I said the man is not rich rather than was not rich. Laser is a present tense verb, right? Even though, you know, it, it doesn't have a present tense conjugation. It just is present in and of itself, right? Um, that there isn't like a laser and then the present tense yelisu or something for the, for the present tense. Laser is just a past tense verb. Um, but it has a present tense meaning, right? It doesn't mean the man wasn't rich. You know, it means the man isn't rich. If you're going to say the man wasn't, you'd maybe say Merkana. Yeah, Merkana Rajalu Ghaniyan. But Laysa is the present tense, right? So that's one thing to know. Yeah, so, yeah, you'd say Laysa Rajalu Ghaniyan. But you can also say Laysa Bi something. And it has exactly the same meaning, right? So rather than saying Laysa Ghaniyan, he's not rich. Right? You can say Laysa Bhaniyin. Yeah. Laysa Bhaniyin. So rather than like rather than you know, it means the same thing, right? You can either say Laysa and then the next word has fet has, or you can say Laysa bi and the word afterwards has kasalas, right? But they mean the same thing. They mean exactly the same thing. Um I remember when I was in the Netherlands um a lot a, a while ago, I went I was I was um in a masjid, um they're Moroccans mostly. It seems like in the Netherlands most of the Muslim community are Turkish or um or Moroccans, but it was a Moroccan masjid and the khutbah was in Arabic and I think the I think the khatib um was pretty into his Arabic grammar because he whenever he said anything with laser he would say it in both ways like he said هذا الفهم ليس بصحيحين he said this understanding is is not sahih it's not correct yeah هذا الفهم ليس بصحيحين وليس ب وليس صحيحين <laughs> he said it both. He was like, "Hadal faham laysa bi sahihin, wa laysa sahihan." It means the same thing. It's like this understanding isn't correct, and it isn't correct. But he said it in both ways, <laughs> right? So I think he, I think he was um, I think it was just someone like myself who who's just kind of into the grammar and says things says things like that. So laysa, right, is one that you need to know. Um, uh, the next the next group are all kind of ones to do with becoming becoming something. Right, so there's the verb sara, which is to do with becoming, which just means to become something. Sara, um, it, it kind of, it can kind of mean to to happen as well. Like I know it's, it's particularly clear in Aramea where you hear where you say people where you hear people say things like, um, you know, ish basir, ish basir or shu basir. It means like what's happening or what's going on, um, but it means like what is becoming is what it really means. Like sara yasir really means to become, but it is used a lot in Aramea. As well, to kind of means you know if something's happening, but um, but in that kind of group, you know, that the sisters of Can are kind of grouped into to do with becoming and then to do with like being and to do with like still still being or continuing to be right. That that those are kind of the, the groups of the sisters of Can. So in that same group of sort of becoming, there's the verb osbaha, which is really common too. Osbaha form four verb. Osbaha yusbihu, um, isbahun. I believe is the, the the noun from it, and that means to become, right? So if you're going to say like the man became rich, أصبح الرجل غنيا, the man became a rich one, yeah, أصبح الرجل غنيا. But um, you can kind of tell that the word أصبح shares shares a root with the word صباح, meaning the morning, right? صباح الخير just means good morning, right? You've probably heard that صباح, and so أصبح I think originally kind of meant for something to happen or for something to become a, that way in the morning. Right, you know, yeah, that, that's why it's osbaha it has the, you know, has the same. It, it, that doesn't mean that that's the only way you have to use it now. Um, yeah, like it, it, it's used often to not just mean that. Yeah, um, yeah, osbaha. You can say osbahtu, osbahtu mudarrisan. I, I became a teacher. Osbahtu mudarrisan, and you, or you could say sirtu mudarrisan. They mean the same thing. Those two mean exactly the same thing. But the same way that I kind of mentioned that osbaha is kind of. In relation to things happening in the morning, hence sabah. There are also verbs that verbs that are also sisters of kana for other times of the day. So there is the verb odha. Like odha means to kind of become or to happen in like the late morning. And yeah, like you know, a lot of you might be familiar with the term odha. Odha is like the late morning. Um, so so odha. You know, if if the man became wealthy in like the late morning, yeah, odha rajalu ghaniyan. You know, the man became rich in in the doha, right? In in the late morning, and likewise, there's the same verb for the masa. Yeah, a lot of you probably had masa al khair. Yeah, good, to say good evening to someone. There's the verb amsa. 
yeah, like if the man became rich in the evening or whatever, then um, then that is a verb. But I, I've I've never heard emsa or odha used in the world. I've heard osbaha thousands of times and sara thousands of times, but um, I've never actually heard odha and emsa um, used, and I've certainly never used them myself. But if anyone does ever use them, or I do read some poetry or whatever that they're ever used, and I'll, I'll know them because because I know them now. And so will you guys, because you guys know them now. Lastly, for kind of the, the verbs about becoming things, is the verb bete. Bete. Um, obviously a hollow verb, just like kana is, just like sara is, but um, as well, I've never heard bete used either, but it, it does kind of mean to become something too. So moving on, we're kind of, all we've got left is really sort of five five or six verbs about um about remaining something or staying something and the most common of them by far is mazala mazala so if you can say that the man is still wealthy mazala rajulu ghaniyan you know mazala um mazala means to yeah it means to still is to still be or to continue to be mazala mazala rajulu ghaniyan there there is also i have also heard and this is also a sister of kana's the verb madama madama but um, madama also kind of means sort of so long as madama ghaniyan kind of means so long as he's wealthy, you know. Um, really, really, really common example of that that kind of demonstrates that point is where um, where Jesus salam, in the Quran in Surah Maryam says ma dumtu hayya ma dumtu hayya is sort of so long as I live, you know, so long as I am living ma dumtu hayya, but it kind of means kind of means like kind of means like I'm still living but it's um it's kind of you know there's, there's a bit of a meaning difference with it kind of meaning yeah so for so long as I live ma dumtu hayya you know ma dumtu mudarrisan for so long as I'm a teacher yeah ma dumtu mudarrisan ma dumtu taliban for so, for so long as I am a student um cool and in that group of words that kind of mean to still be um or to continue being is the verb ma bariha ma bariha also the verb man fakka, man fakka, ma fatia and valla. So what have we got? So we'll run through them and I'll do them kind of in that same order and I'll group them as well as we go. So firstly, the head of the family, the biggest of all the sisters, is the verb kana, right? Kana is by far the most common of these. Kana is the second most used verb in the Quran. It's used 1,319 or something times. It's is used, oh no, no, 1,358, I think times it's used in the Qur'an, but 1,300 and something, right? Like, it's the second most verb used in the Qur'an, just after qala. It's very, very common. Um, and then the verb laysa, really important, um, means to not be, and then I also mentioned a couple of other points um, about it, but it's, its meaning is present tense. It doesn't have a present tense conjugation, though, but its meaning in and of itself is uh, is present tense. Um, we talked about the verb sara, which means to be. It's kind of the most pure verb, um, meaning to be. But then there's other verbs that kind of have their own slight connotations to do with times of the day, like asbaha, becoming in the morning, odha, becoming in the late afternoon, um, emsa, becoming in the late in, in the evening. And then we talked about the verb beta as well, which just means to become as well, but it's, it's not common at all, is it? In your own active usage, I would probably just recommend you use sara and asbaha. Um, I prefer asbaha, I just think it sounds nicer. Asbaha. Asbahtu. Um, cool, okay, so those are the ones to do with becoming and then we talked about continuing to be or or doing something for so long as something else we talked about mazala we talked about madama we talked about manfaka we talked about um mafatia and mabariha and then al as well and those are all of the sisters of kana that i know of if you know of any other sisters of kana please put them in the comments below if you're listening on youtube or if you know any others and you're just listening in the ears on podcast please remember to message me on or dm me on instagram at arabic with sam all of the socials are at arabic with sam there's no arabic with sam official or arabic with sam one or um or anything like that it's all just at arabic with sam on all of the socials you know from twitter facebook snapchat um i do have i do have twitch and i really wanted to do twitch so that I could tell my wife that I was buying a PlayStation for work, and then I'll, I'll just like I'll live stream me playing FIFA and stuff, and I tell my wife that it's work, but I I couldn't get away with that. She wouldn't let me have that. So, but we still hope, inshallah, uh, maybe I'll be allowed a PlayStation one day, and uh, and we can do Twitch, and uh, but but I do have Arabic with Sam on Twitch though. I do have the name, but I just don't ever use it. 
So that's everything for this episode. Um, all I'm going to do on the on the way out is just say, um, if you've enjoyed this episode of the podcast, you're listening on YouTube, please like and share it. Um, or if you're anywhere else listening to the podcast, then just come over and talk to me on one of the socials. It'd be really cool to have you. Uh, follow the page, subscribe to the channel, like on Facebook and all that. And uh, that's the end of this episode about the Kana family. You know, all of the sisters of Kana. Not a particularly long episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Episode 34, we're going to be talking about the GCSE Arabic. Um, a lot of the students will have already had their exams. We'll be having them very soon for the GCSE Arabic. And um, some of you know that I used to be, I, I, I've conducted oral exams for the GCSE before. And um, I have some strong opinions about the GCSE. And, all, and also just some hacks and some tips. And some. I want to answer some common questions about the GCSE too. Because um, a lot of people do it. Um, a lot of people do it for the wrong reasons. But a lot of people are doing it. And um, And I would like to offer some little hacks. Because there are some ways that you can like... There are some ways that you can get more marks than you deserve just by knowing a few little tricks. And um, yeah, I'll be happy to share those with you from my experience with the with the exam boards. So that's everything for this episode. Catch you guys soon. Have a really, really good day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. The Arabic in 60 Steps program is a step-by-step online Arabic course, which takes you right from learning your very first few words in the Arabic language and putting them together to make simple sentences, right the way up to knowing over a thousand Arabic words, and being able to access texts like the Qur'an, Hadith literature, and even Arabic poetry. The minute you join, you have immediate access to the video course and up over a hundred bonus resources. I'll put your premium printed and bound workbook in the post for you, first class that very same day. Wherever you live in the world, we'll get one out to you at no extra cost whatsoever. And you'll also get six months of one-to-one mentorship from one of our graduate level mentors. You know, just to give you some of the names of the mentors that we have. First, we have our brother Mohammed, who's actually been a guest on the podcast. He's actually a graduate himself of the Arabic in 60 Steps program. So he knows it like the back of his hand. But we also have our brother Ismail Beaumont, who's the founder and the creator of Mesor Arabic. It's an enormous privilege to have him as one of the mentors on the program. And then for the sisters, we have our sister Maymoon, who's actually from Singapore originally, but spent a number of years studying in Syria. She has a very, very high level Arabic graduate, mashallah. So the course is an investment. You know, we need to tell you it is an investment. It needs to be so that we know the students that we're getting are serious. And you know that the teachers and the instruction that you're getting is serious and we're going to get the job done. So although students normally have to pay thousands of pounds to get this volume of resources and support and to have it so flexible and such high quality provided for them, we actually only charge £497. And that's for lifetime access, by the way. And what's even better is that we do actually have a few different payment plans available to help students spread the cost if needs be. I mean, look, come on. Thousands of people out there are spending way over £50 a month on coffee and takeaways. Using that money for a few months to learn Arabic instead is a seriously good deal. To find out more, to have a personal phone call with me for half an hour to see if it's a good fit for you and to see how we can get you on the program, just go to www.arabicin60steps.com. Hope to hear from you guys soon.